We are being live streamed. All right. Let's see if I can get it on my phone so I can, if we have questions and stuff, I can answer that it is. Make sure the my sound's not out. All right. Now I can, can interact if we need to, or we can just interact here if we need to, whichever way it goes. Great. I'm excited about this chapter. This, I was studying this morning and looked at it several times over this week, and I'm like, this is just, th this is why I had a hard time actually working on this study guide, because it's just so rich, and I got to mm -hmm. chapter four, actually, and just laid it aside. I went, I just can't, there's no way to bring this down to, it's going to be a whole book out of chapter four, right? <laughs> so, uh, but we, we got it there. Might not have covered everything, but we got it there, so we're going to be covering chapter three, three today, tonight. And we'll see how far we get into chapter three. Our record is about a half a chapter a week. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. Because it's been good. It's been really good. That's not a complaint at all. All right. I'm going to start with prayer then. Lord, we just thank you for today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for that as we dig into your word that you you give it back to us in a way that's applicable and and usable and makes sense in our practical in our our day-to-day -day lives we just thank you that you didn't just save us and go sit on your throne and say well i'll see you later you interact with us and thank you tonight as we study your word and open your word that you just interact with us and you give us insights into who you are and just let us know learn more about you and your love for us and 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 just your kingdom and just establish us strengthen us in the word tonight and in your love and in your spirit in jesus name amen amen all right tonight we're going to be start with looking with ver at verses four through ten and some of this we have already kind of talked about as far as righteousness versus sin and and things like that and okay i had somebody ask me a question this week but maybe we'll get into that in a minute so i'm going to just go ahead and read i'm in the new king james version here i do have the amplified but that's so expanded <laughs> it's good for reading but not good for study or good for studying not reading <laughs> but uh so we're, I'm, I'm reading from the new king james version we're going to go for i'm going to read verses four through i'm double checking ten Chapter three, whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he has was manifested to take away our sins and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him or known him. One. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remain his seed, God's seed remains in him, and he can't sin because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice, and that's a key word there, practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. So that's four through 10. Now we've kind of, good evening. Uh, <laughs> we've, uh, <laughs> we've kind of broken this up a little bit already. Some of these, these topics we've talked about as far as sin, we're not saying if we make a mistake or, or we, we commit a sin, you know, God doesn't jerk our salvation away and go, you aren't worthy of this anymore, <laughs> you know, anything like that. We're talking about someone who, as a practice, seeks to live a righteous life, then you're God's child. If you, as a practice, you seek to live an unholy life, there's a scripture, you might remember where it is, but it says they run, and I think it's in Proverbs, is one of them, but it says they run to do wickedness. Mm -hmm. You know, they just, they, they just are fixated on trying to do wickedness or do commit sin or just break every rule so to speak or things like that that's that's not what we're talking about that person we would have to question this between them and god but you might have to question their salvation because once we're saved once god lives in us we have his spirit we should be pursuing righteous it doesn't mean righteousness it doesn't mean necessarily that we're perfect yet but that we're striving toward perfect just means mature in the greek anyway we're striving towards perf that that type of perfection maturity and walking in his righteousness so uh we, we've kind of already 
covered some of that. That's kind of a summary of that. I'm going to go ahead, unless y'all have something to add there, I'm going to go ahead and jump in with our questions here. Make sure I'm on the right page. <laughs> that would be bad. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, hold it up. Let me see. <laughs> okay, so verses four through six explain sin and the law. We are not under the law, but we are under grace as we've been covered by the blood of Christ. Sin is contrary, not just to the Old Testament law, but to the very nature of God. So what did Jesus do with our sin? We'll see how many of these questions we can skim through, right? <laughs> we, might, we might make it to chapter four. <laughs> No. I'm not prepared for chapter four, so that's all we'll go to. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I said we'll not get this far. <laughs> okay, so what did Jesus do with our sin? What does it say he did with it? And he says he forgave and forgot. Absolutely. Absolutely. He took them uh, away. Absolutely. Yeah, it also says he... I'll make sure I don't answer another question that's down here. Okay. This also says he um, he destroyed the works of the devil. This, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So we don't have to, you know, Rome, in Romans, is it six where it talks about, or maybe eight, where it talks about we don't have to be in bonds to the devil anymore. We're not a slave. Of, we're no longer a slave of sin. We're actually a bond slave of Christ. That's how Paul described himself, too. And it says we choose to serve. We're not forced to, but we're no longer forced to serve sin. Or even it says it's lust. It says not to yield your members as servants to unrighteousness, but to yield your members, your body, your mind, your energies to serving God. I believe that's in Romans. I want to say that's in Romans 6. Uh and so the, Jesus has already defeated the enemy. It says the devil sinned from the beginning, too, from the very beginning, which we know he, from Isaiah's account, he was uh, destroyed early on because he tried to rise and ascend to the throne of God, was cast down from heaven. He just kind of had that pride in him from the start. Well, what's, the, what's the first recorded thing that the devil did? Well, the first thing we have recorded would that we would typically read first, at least, uh, yeah. depending on when things were written, would be the the deception in the garden. So he'd already fallen by then, even before right. even before creation, then or at some point in there, he he fell. So what what was what would you say would Satan work there? His work was to deceive, to distort, to destroy, to get in between even God, so to speak, and that's really what he wants to do with us. With us too. Well, then, Amen. then the, as you've read, the Son of God was revealed for this purpose to destroy the devil's works. Mm -hmm. So, is his work, Go ahead. <laughs> is his work totally destroyed in the sense of annihilation? Hmm. I would have to say. Boy, that's a tricky question. <laughs> because I have an answer, but wait a second. Because on one hand, yes. Uh, but on the other hand, no, because we can still succumb to pride. We can still we can still sin. We can still do things wrong on purpose, or we can or you know, for, or before we're saved, we are a slave to sin, to to unrighteousness. But Jesus broke the bonds of that, so we don't have to be a slave to sin. Is that close? <laughs> I, don't, I don't have an answer. But <laughs> oh, okay, it, okay. It just came up out of what you were saying. Right, right. That's a good question. He though. came to destroy the works. Right. And in one sense, yes, he did. And I, I have to be careful because I know what I'm preaching Sunday. Okay, well, don't get on that. I'll wait. I'll watch you. <laughs> wait, it gets up on Sunday. Okay. <laughs> uh, on one hand, yes, he destroyed the works. Yes. Uh, by enabling us to be able to overcome <laughs> those works. Right. And as yep. you say, uh, rightly said, uh, that we no longer have to be bond slave to the sin. Right. Right. And that's that's really what the devil wants is right. for us to be bound by the sin right that is very evident in, in all 
All we have to do is look around. And we he he wants to con he, he wants to convince us that we're still under that, and he does that sometimes by condemnation, and we confuse that with conviction sometimes because when God convicts, it does it isn't necessarily a good feeling, but it brings that grace, and and but condemnation, you know, the enemy likes to really play that one on us and make us see you. He likes to deceive us trick us we follow that's our our fault we follow into whatever it is whether it's pride or whatever and then he wants to condemn us for look how bad you are and i'm like you love me over here <laughs> the bad the bad part was following his thinking the bad part was following his lead really and but then he wants to condemn us for that you know and and so but Jesus, when god convicts us of it there's that conviction but immediate grace and healing and restoration too and so it's not it doesn't leave you with that empty, harsh, lost feeling. Conviction doesn't, but condemnation doesn't. Sometimes we confuse the two in, in the religious circles. Those two get confused. But, yeah. they, but God won't condemn us because we're righteous in him. But he will convict us. He will convince us of sin and, and cleanse us and bring his grace and mercy. I, I think you hit it that condemnation is a putting down. Yes. And conviction is a lifting up. Yes, yes. The, the result of the two, in other words. Yes, yes. If, if when he condemns you, the Satan's trying to put you down, but when the Spirit convicts you, he's trying to pick you up. Yes, that's good. And they're worlds apart. And the somebody end posted on Facebook recently that um, God didn't. I mean, the devil didn't tempt people to at Adam and Eve to murder or steal. He just tempted them to question God's word. Right. Yes. Yes. And, good. and isn't isn't that still what he's doing? Don't we still have yeah. that same Deception. type of temp that same type of temptation? You know, uh, did God really say? Did God? And that's what he did with Jesus at the temptation. You know, if if you're the Son of God. So if he could get Jesus to yeah. doubt what God had told him, you are my son, then he could trick him. Of course, he couldn't because he was Christ. But Jesus didn't even answer that question. He just he would say, well, the word of God says, <laughs> you know, and so he didn't yeah. he didn't follow the bait, so to speak. But he used the same strategy when he was tempting him. You know, if you are really the son of God, why don't you just do this? If you're really the son of God, why don't you do this? And when he got to the worship, Jesus went, OK, that's enough you know we're not you know messing with me now but he yeah. it was the same strategy he used there if he could get him to doubt what god had said and and don't we i'll have to I'll, let me just say me um sometimes i i struggle with that identity and i think as a whole in the church we struggle with that identity who sometimes we miss out on a lot I could, I'll, so it's not everybody else i miss out on a lot so i'm not putting it off on everybody else because i don't always know who i am in him and i have to remind myself wow. who i am i'm god's child i'm beloved i'm accepted in the beloved i'm i he loves me he has mercy for me he has grace for me. because my brain goes there's no way because i know I'm, what a mess up i can be but so we still struggle with that same thing. Are we going to listen to what God says about us? Or are we going to listen to what our brain says about us? And that was, it was the same strategy to get us. And so he's not even going for the big stuff. It's the little stuff that trips most of us up. I was going to say that um, my pastor talks a lot about missing the mark being less about, you know, like right and wrong and more about right and almost right. And that's what you're saying, <laughs> right. like the enemy does he gives us an almost right and right. Um, deceives us in that way that we really, we really have to know um, the genuine from the counterfeit because he, he brings it pretty darn close, but not all the way. So, yeah. Absolutely. yeah and he uses a, an element of the word, an element of truth. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I mean. That almost yeah, true. Exactly. And that we, we should have learned that in our true and false questions in high school. <laughs> yes, exactly. Very simple, right? <laughs> if, it, if it is one word false, then it is then false. false. That's exactly, exactly and, right. And that's, what the, that's what the devil, you know, we label them what? Uh, white lies and black lies. Yeah. This is not as bad as that. <laughs> uh, right. So 
it's, maybe this is all right because yeah, you know it's not as bad as something. I haven't killed anybody today. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. Which is that polar opposite, but usually it's just that yeah. right and almost right. But killing is exactly. the obvious, and that's the, <laughs> exactly not usually exactly. what we stumble in. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it, it's not that because most, you know, the vast majority of people will not do not go around killing other people. That's right. Amazing. Yeah. Right. right. Something we've, seen a lot, we've seen a lot of you know, last six, eight weeks, we've seen a lot of people who have done so. Yes. And in my mind, that is just a sign of pure evil. Yes. It's just mm -hmm. nothing, no other way to describe it other than pure evil being manifested. Absolutely. People's life. To go and yeah. shoot children, to get on a roof and just kill as many people or shoot as many people as you can. That's pure evil. Yes, absolutely. Sorry, that's but anyway, that's not. It's okay. <laughs> We're not stumbling okay. there. Most of us. <laughs> we. That's what I'm saying, though. Most yeah. of most of the vast majority, 99 percent of the people won't do that. Mm -hmm. But it's in those other areas D where the devil comes in and tries to get us. Didn't we read in James that where he said, and I know Jesus mentioned it, but in our study of James, didn't it? talk about if we we can murder with our with our words and murder is in the heart mm -hmm. and if i you know if i condemn you when you walk in my house here's an here's a example today a lady delivered my groceries today and she had on all the i'm assuming she was muslim she may not have been her she said her family's in morocco i think she said and i had a brief second do i accept her because <laughs> obviously we've got different faiths no matter what right here and you know and so but i we we began to chat and visit and we had a really good visit uh in the heat even i don't know how she wore all that in the heat <laughs> and but but i accepted her and i had the option of rejecting her in my heart whether i said anything to her about it or not i had that option of rejecting her because she didn't look like me but we had just the best conversation while we were unloading groceries and things because i chose in that moment and i'm not perfect so you know but but in that moment i chose i'm going to love this person even though i'm pretty sure we're different faiths here mm -hmm. and so and then i gave her a good tip yeah. and and things like that but if she comes back i'll have something to build on because i didn't just throw her away because and but don't we don't we in a sense murder when we they walk up and they don't look like us then we go oh that rejection in a way it's not murder we're not standing on a building shooting people but in our heart we're killing any opportunity yeah. of witnessing even we're killing an opportunity of of loving a person that god loves mm -hmm. no matter what their faith is Good. Good. so you know we don't we don't want to so sometimes we 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 think we're okay because we're not on a roof picking people off with a sniper rifle and yet in our hearts we're still condemning people that shouldn't be condemned before they even get a chance, <laughs> you know? And so sometimes, sometimes we, what is it? What did he say to the Pharisees? You, you tithe on your spices, but you miss the weightier matters of the law. You're following the law to the T, but you're missing the whole point. And I think for us believers on this side of the cross, our whole point, if we want to say it that way, is loving God with all of our heart, mind, soul, body, and strength and loving our neighbors as ourselves, And I think he yeah. says the, the law hinges on all of that. And it's not that hard. You just love people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you love God first. I think you just love people. Yeah. You know? And so I well, think even like letting his love yeah. reign in our hearts. It's not even in our love. It's his love that right. reigns in our heart. Right, right. Exactly. All right. We made it through one question, <laughs> but these others we kind of covered too. So what happens if we continue to live in him? What happens? Let's see. We have to look back at our scriptures here. What happens when we live, continue to live in him? Oh, let's see. <laughs> we practice righteousness. Is that what we're looking for here? Uh, we will not continue to sin. Right. We won't practice unrighteousness. We won't continue to sin. Right. I think that's the key thing. Once you accept yes. Christ, you don't just uh, go back out the next day and do what you did before. Right, you right. Continue to sin because that's if you continue to sin, 
And I think that's what he's saying. If you continue to sin, then you don't know it. Right, right. Everyone who sins has not seen him. Everyone who remains in him does not sin. Right. Everyone who sins are, in other words, they, the, you know, the tense there is continue to sin. Yes. Has not seen him or known him. Right. And that takes us to that next question. It says, what does John say about the person who keeps on sinning? A person who continues to sin and they know they're sinning. They know they're doing things wrong. They're not <laughs> hidden in Christ. There's just no two ways around about that. Because when we're hidden in him too, and we understand the price he paid so that we could be clothed in his righteousness, we don't want to hurt him in that way. We want to cherish, we want to protect that relationship. And so to throw that aside... And just embrace unrighteousness should be a very distasteful thing for us, right? <laughs> That's the right word. That might not be your right word. Well, he's very plain there. He says if you continue to do that, you're not a follower. Yeah, exactly. Well, he actually even says in verse 8 that they're of the devil. Yeah, if you're doing the works of the devil, he who sins is of the devil. But the devil has sinned from the beginning. I, I would think that mine does. Says, and, mine says whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. Yeah. The devil has been sinning from the beginning. So, yeah. And the key word there is practice because we're not talking about mistakes. Yeah. We're not talking right. about something I don't know is wrong because, you know, as we mature as believers and mature in the word, we see new things that we realize, oh, my goodness. You know, I look back at even some of my early teachings and things and I go, oh, gosh. <laughs> you know how did i think that how did i go this this route but yeah. as we grow and mature we learn things and we we you know we just it's just like growing as an, a, a real life human adult you know as a person we grow over almost 62 years uncle roger's fixing to have a birthday too overall <laughs> oh, the oh, but, I'm listening here now. <laughs> okay <laughs> Who, who's the oldest who's the oldest no. now? <laughs> okay never mind <laughs> I knew, I knew well, by the sound, <laughs> but, but there's a natural growth as an individual, just in a natural, and you just learn things, you know, you know, a little bitty child, you tell them, don't touch the stove. It's hot. They're going to go, oh, and they're going to touch the stove and they go, oh, it's hot. You know, I told you it's hot, but as an adult, you know, if, if you ever, I, if you ever had a gas stove and you had those grates, this is the thing that came to my mind, they have those grates. And one time, one time only, I was cooking and I moved the pot. I did supper, whatever. I came back and I just grabbed that grate and it was still hot. And I dropped it immediately. I have now to this day, even electric, I'll go. <laughs> it only took me one time. And as you learn, that's hot. And it's not that much different. It's very parallel to in the spirit. We learn, oh, that's hot. <laughs> Don't touch it. Test it first. <laughs> you know, and we just learn things naturally in the spirit too as we mature as we walk with christ as we read the word as we grow in our knowledge of him as peter's i believe is that's in peter growing the knowledge of him we grow in the knowledge of him we just learn what he likes what he doesn't like it's the same as a relationship with the person you know there you sometimes you you know what a person you know does or doesn't like or doesn't want to talk about and you just don't because you respect that person you love that person and you don't want to be at odds with that person and it's really not that much different than walking with god we don't want to be at odds with god i want to yeah. be pleasing to him and i want he, i don't want to do something that i know he doesn't approve of do you have something well there's there's two things that came to my mind when you were saying uh, we grow in grace and the knowledge yes. of jesus christ yes the other one is the that we are to test the spirits. Yes. We are we have a right to hold up whatever is going on against the word of God. Absolutely. And against our own personal experience with God. Yes. Is this right? Right. Is this is this compatible with the scripture? That's growing in grace and in knowledge. We grow in grace, we grow in knowledge. Uh, you know, right. That's why we have in these Bible studies to grow in, in knowledge, right? As well as grace to understand better. And as we grow, then we're less likely 
to fall yes. into those old traps because yes. we're growing and the spirit will bring that conviction to us or bring a check in our spirit right that we can't do this or this is not right yes because we're growing yes and so absolutely when those things happen then we will we will not want to continue to sin right right because we all know that right. when the holy spirit convicts us it's not always pleasant <laughs> right we you know we can become very miserable in spirit yes until we figure it out <laughs> yeah. it's like oh oh okay uh, all right. got it. <laughs> okay god I'm, you got my attention yeah, right right uh, and it uh, that we learned that and i think as i said a couple of times ago that's why we who are more mature christians need to help the younger ones yes understand that what is happening in their lives is that the lord is convicting them or is showing them yes that what the way they're headed is not the way he wants them to go right they may exactly. they, won't, they won't understand that until they've grown a while right and, exactly and in that growth they will make a few mistakes absolutely absolutely john goes on talking about seven through ten the last part of these um the difference between the family of God and the works of the, so we're talking about the, the works of the devil. So we're talking like in verse 10, it says in this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. In other words, we can tell the difference. Now we're not supposed to judge <laughs> when and we're not talking about judging someone and going, oh, well, obviously you're just not saved or you're just not doing, you know, you're just not where you're supposed to be or anything like that. We're not talking about that, but it's, it's, he says, it's pretty clear that we should be able to, you know, our, our walk will demonstrate where we are with God. Our walk will demonstrate where we aren't with God, <laughs> you know, and we always have to give grace to one another, but we'll be able to tell. We, we should easily be able to tell if someone is lying habitually, they can't be a child of God. Right. That's what he said. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, because if you lie on purpose and, you know, I, I've had a couple of aides that if they were talking, they were lying. <laughs> you know and it's just like oh my goodness you know yeah. <laughs> so but and on per, some for some people it's actually easier to tell a lie than to just tell the truth the truth wasn't even bad but they got to embellish it or something or make a lie out of it almost to be comfortable or so it's weird how people can be that way but this in this way it's evident they're not a child of god well what do you do with that you don't condemn you don't judge you love them and you give them that opportunity to see and embrace the truth. And maybe they'll make that change. Maybe they'll come over from darkness into light, you know, just, and it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. It's not, oh, well, you just have to get out of my house and don't ever come back, but we love them. That doesn't mean we necessarily condone, but we just love them and show them the right way with our own actions, with our own word, with, without lying. <laughs> it's, it's actually possible. <laughs> you know. So, uh, so what does it demonstrate when people walk righteously? They are forgiven. Do what? They are forgiven and righteous. Absolutely. We're, They're we're a child of God. Like Christ. Uh, those who sin belong to whom? You like that? I used whom, Aunt Mary. Thank you. Mary. That, was it? Was it correct? Was it correct? Because I don't. Right. I do math. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> Those who practice sin belong to whom? <laughs> yeah, you know, you have to write that uh, those who sin as a practice or a habit. Yes, I stuck that in there. I did because I wanted the clarification because we, even though we believe, and I know Uncle Roger, you've talked about this a lot, that we don't have to live a life of sin. We don't have to sin every day, but we do still make mistakes yeah. here and there. You know, I'm not perfect yet and any of y'all can testify to that i'm sure <laughs> you know? but we don't need any examples tonight maybe next week uh you know but so we're not talking about someone who makes a mistake or someone who 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 does but we're talking about the habitual sin if you're living a life of sin i you know if you if i've, I've had a couple of people lately go i know this is wrong but yeah well then you just sealed the whole deal with that little three-letter word 
You just sealed the whole, I know this is wrong. Then you, you've condemned yourself. You already condemned yourself and you just as well get over it, figure it out and, and repent and change <laughs> from there, you know? And so, because if you, if you continue to sin after that, it's what you say after that, but <laughs> you know, that lets you know whether you're really a child of God or not. You know, I would never do anything to, to offend either of my dads, <laughs> you, know, so, you know, because I love them and I didn't want, I wouldn't do something on purpose. Did I do things that hurt them? I'm sure I did from time to time, but it was, I would never do something on purpose and, or just keep doing something. If my daddy or my dad asked me not to, I, I wouldn't just do it. I wouldn't just continue doing it because I love them. Whether it made sense to me or not is irrelevant. Whether I care, you know, whether I wanted to or not was irrelevant. I, I wanted to please them. And that's that same relationship with God. And so we're talking about someone who, who says, I know this is wrong, but then that's it. They're all, they've sealed it that they're not really pursuing God. Right. If you say, I know this is wrong and I'm going to change it, <laughs> you know, and that doesn't mean that's easy either. No. You know, it doesn't yeah. mean it's easy, but that's the intention there. If, if we understand the, yeah. the real meaning of practice and habit. Yes. Uh, then that means it's something that has taken hold, really. Yes. A habit yes. is something that you do without thinking. Uh, yes. You know, I'm talking to you, but I, I don't have to think my hand move when I talk. <laughs> right. Except when I'm preaching a sermon, then I'm finding my place on my you know, making sure I can't <laughs> see my hands move as much, but I'm making sure I know where I am. My finger held for it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But but that's what a habit is. It's something that you do without thinking. Yes. And that's what a, if you practice it. Yes. As they say, if you've ever practiced and learned how to ride a bicycle, you'll always be able to ride a bicycle. Yes. Maybe not as good as you did when you're young, but you, <laughs> you know how to get on and you know how to do it and you're on the balance. Right. You playing the guitar, you don't have to start over. Uh -uh. You practice enough that you pick up the guitar and you know what's what. Right. Right. I used to tell my students that um, practice doesn't mean perfect. Practice makes permanent. Yes. Uh, what, whatever good. you practice, whether it's good or bad. Right. We had a man in Stuville who said that it was easier before he became a Christian, it was easier to just lie than tell the truth. And he said that after he became a Christian, he had the hard time remembering what was the truth and what wasn't mm -hmm. because he had lied so much. Right. He said that, you know, he wished he hadn't done it, but he did. And he, he just practiced lying. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yeah, Richard and I. Yeah. And that, no. that's right. You know, it's you, you've got to break that. Yes, the sin is forgiven when right. you accept Christ. Right. But if it if you've been practicing sin and it's become a habit to tell a lie or whatever it is, then you you know it's it's going to take the grace of God and some of your own internal strength to break that habit. You know, he, yes. it's right. It, yeah. It's not something. Unless there is a miraculous deliverance that happens at the same time. Which is possible. Which does happen. <laughs> so, you know, it doesn't happen to every person. Right, right. Um, and this is that miraculous deliverance that everything has just been turned around. And the habit is mm -hmm. so broken at that moment of conversion. Then yeah. you know, what, what you were saying is right. That it's difficult when you've been... That's been a practice and a habit, even after you become Christ. Yeah. I've had a lot of he, people, especially talking about cursing. You know, yeah. they curse. This man said that that he had done that for so long that he didn't know later, after he became a Christian, if he was telling the truth or telling a lie. He didn't know the difference. He didn't yeah. know if he was. So God had to show him, I'm sure. But yeah, he, yeah. he said it just such a habit, he did not know the difference. Yeah. We don't like the word addiction, but we can be addicted to habits. And I think God has to break yeah. that and yeah. teach us a different way. And even, even uh, like you were saying, you know, prejudice, when you saw that lady that delivered your groceries, you know, it's easy to 
just assume that somebody's something right. without and and God showed you that she was different, you know, that you need mm-hmm. to love her. And mm-hmm. I think that it's very important to ask God to convict us of those things. Yes. And it's not always easy, but with those things that bind us. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I was thinking about even like in the old testament where where um well even just uh israel the that they were practicing unrighteousness israel as the northern kingdom were practicing unrighteousness to the point where it became a permanent thing that destroyed um, that kingdom Mm -hmm. you know and Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. so god even says i'll take it to a point you know but at some point I'll let you just play it out. Like you're going to continue on that. And when I think about practice makes permanent, I think about driving a wedge and the more you hit it, the harder it is to pull it out. Right. And so you've been doing that for a while. You're really making it permanent. And that's a good thing in some scenarios, like building a structure of something, but not with our sin. It's it's really, like you said, with the one pastor admitting that, yeah. That, that's that's kind of, isn't that kind of rid of what Romans 1 is about when it talks about they they went so far in their sin that God just gave them over mm. yeah. to that sin, whatever yeah. it was. Uh, yeah, yeah. Various translations have different words there, but, right. but, but mm-hmm. the idea is not the word God that they use, but the idea was, is that they went so far in that kind of sinning that God said, all right, you want it, you have it. You just yeah. get it over right. to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's that's a horrible place to be in. It is. Oh. If you think about yeah. how much of God constantly trying to draw us to him and that that constant rejecting, you know, like time and time again, God shows us through his creation, through his word, through sending people into our lives, through, you know, um, bringing it to our mind even, you know, and, and yet we keep, you know people who practice it just keep turning away from him that you know a lot of times people say well god you know well god didn't do enough you know and it's like no when you really get into scripture you see how much god has done over and over okay. and over again you know? right, right. and it really does put you in awe before him you know and, and humility because yes Lord, you are a compassionate Lord. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Anything else? Go to the next section. We might actually finish chapter three tonight. That would be in, that would be something. We, we might. Get to it. Part of last part of chapter the first. The question two that you have there. Uh, I think we did. Let's see. I just asked B, C. Why can't God's children live a life of sin? I think we pretty well covered that. And how can we discern the children of God and those who are not? I think we kind of covered those. You think you have something else to say? I I wrote myself a note on on that last thing there. Are you going to share it? (laughs) Or is it just for you? (laughs) I'm just checking. I'm just checking. (laughs) It's verse 10. You know, read verse 10. Verse 10. Whoever does not do what is right is not of God. Right, especially the one who does not love his brother. And my note to to here is notice the word right. Whoever does not do what is right or righteous is not God. So that you know that's kind of how we we can discern. I know you know we all do we all judge to a point. Is right. to judge the sentence. That's God. We all right. do some judging simply because we can see what's right and wrong. Right. So if we see people who are not doing what is right, and it says here, especially the one who does not love his brother. Yes. Now, now my version here has verse 10 in the next section, not in the first section there. Yeah, mine does. It makes we, it a vision right before verse 10. Into the yeah. next section. For this is the message. And so for this is the message in verse 11, 
has to refer back to verse 10. To loving your brother. Yeah. To doing what is right. If you're not doing what is right, is not of God. Right. And right. It, it goes back to how can you how how can you well, I just read it in morning devotion this week. Uh, you cannot love God and man. You cannot love right. God and evil or what's wrong. Right. right. Uh, and especially how can you how can you say I love God and you hate your brother? Right. We, we yeah. know that, that reference yes. is not necessarily talking about physical blood brothers and sisters. Yes. Right. Jesus gave another definition to brother you know, and all. Right. Right. But you were saying earlier about the, the lady who came. So we, the word right, I think, is a key word in that verse. And, yep. and if we do what is right and know what is right, we're going to be, we are going to be judged on how we respond, how we respond to what is right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, he, he goes in right on into Cain and Abel here who were actual physical brothers and they didn't love one another. But I, mm -hmm. I don't think it's limited to that, like you said. Yeah. But he goes right into this is the message you've heard from the beginning that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was one who was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. So he just labels him right there as of the wicked one of the devil. If you sin, you're of the devil, period. Right. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers were righteous. And so uh, we'll go ahead and read on this next question. It says, Can I taste a rabbit a minute? Yes, absolutely. I like this, rabbits. This, you know, <laughs> I, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm amazed at uh, the 12 sons of Jacob. Okay. How Throughout the scripture, do you know how many times it shows that they didn't get along? <laughs> yes, a uh, lot. Well, they started with Joseph, right? <laughs> well, it probably started before then, but it became right? evident in Joseph. Yes, yes. And what they did to Joseph. Right. But do you, do you remember what Joseph said to his brothers after he had mm -hmm. revealed himself? Yes. After he said, God had brought me. You, here. you meant this for evil. Yeah, no, no. God. Well, that part? Not, or the other? Oh, part. before that. The oh. last thing he says to them, if, I, if my memory is right, is now don't fall out on the way home. Yeah, yes, I remember that. You know, yeah. <laughs> don't fall out on your way home. <laughs> right. Because he knew it was likely, right? <laughs> and, and, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. yeah. He knew. <laughs> yeah, they were they would stand there in front of him blaming each other. Well, this is because you did this. They're doing that right. I told you if we did that. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it, 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 and, and I see that as I read uh, that there's this constant in that in their own brother, and then it is evident in their descendants later yeah. on yes absolutely. and what comes to my mind is when joshua and they've defeated you know they, they come to that time of peace and he sends the soldiers of manasseh and get back across mm -hmm. what did they do before they cross the jordan back to their homeland they build an altar and then they cross over and right. immediately the others say, look at what they've done. They've <laughs> built an altar and they How dare you? call everybody to go to war. Yeah, with the brothers. With the brothers, with mm -hmm. their, the descendants of the brothers. Right. And it, it's just carried down through there that, you know, they didn't really love their brothers. <laughs> and it, it was right. something that was so strong in that the, from the original 12. Mm -hmm. this trust i don't know what you want to call it i don't know i've not done a real study and you know, see what other people said but i saw i see it through the scripture how that they're constantly bickering among themselves they didn't love their brothers that's the only thing i can come up with. yeah the disciples bickered among themselves too they argued over who was going to sit on the yeah. to the right hand when they ascend to the king but they, of course they thought it was going to be a 
natural kingdom too at that point still but they were like we get to sit there and jesus was like yeah i don't even know what you're talking about (laughs) but they so there's always been that thread of and maybe it was a seed that was planted in cain and abel i don't know carol you got something i was just gonna say along with that thread is as you were as we were talking a little bit earlier um about the righteousness and the love which is what you're continuing to talk about um Mm -hmm. It's, it's like how God, it, it's just the thread all the way through, right? There's always, like God will say, speak truth and love. There's your righteousness and your love. Mm-hmm. And then his, right. God's um, standard as well as his love. And people want to do one or the other, you know, <laughs> more right. legalistic or they're more, you know, passive and letting anything come through. But, um, but yeah, just how God constantly talks to us in various ways of, both you know that there has to be that balance and both elements for the fullness to be there so um another thread that i noted and i i I really think i I have a jewish website that i check on certain issues and things and 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 some of the articles that i've read in there i I get the sense uh, that there's some of that still going on even today in mm-hmm. today's descendants of those original brothers, you know, the sons of Jacob that make up right. the, uh, that they're still. Right. Well, and even in our own families, I mean, you know, like we can have that within our, we, we can see that within the own, our own modern day families where, you know, as they grow or whatever, that there's division. And, and God even said that, right? Because didn't he say um, at one point that there would be, mothers against i don't know the list but relatives, days, yeah. against relatives you know and yeah and, in the and last days he said yeah within within just the family unit so it is um, not just of the 12 disciples or the apostles but it's throughout right i only think ishmael and isaac in the beginning it was, yeah. that was more their mothers but it was still <laughs> similar you know then you've got leah and rachel well, the prophecy for both of them were that they were right 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 so there's there's always conflict but when we trust god there'll always be a resolution also well yeah. god even says that he creates adversity right so there's there is that element of adversity that spurs us into loving him more i think so he uses it i'll say that and he yeah i think there's a scripture that says that he creates adversity so I'm not familiar with that. Maybe so. Sounds interesting. Because I saw it one time, and maybe it's just the way the Bible verse was, or the The translation. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus said, I came not to, or I came to, let's see, I forgot how it's quoted. It's in Matthew, I think. Not to bring peace, but a sword. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what he said uh, at one place? Cause brother to be against brother and right. That should be Matthew God. 24, I think. Yeah, I think it is Matthew 24. Yeah, but I think you know when Jesus is saying that, Larry, I think that has, don't you think that has a lot to do with uh, the end time and those who are yes. living for the Lord and not that that's that's gonna they're gonna turn against each other. Yeah. yeah. And even like well, like we talked about Satan, like he created Satan and Satan chose to be to have adversity so free will comes with that possibility of adversity right. so i i'm not saying like he's putting it out there but like he's created everything and so an adversity is a part of what's happened and i think it comes from the free will element of all of us you know that we he gives us the choice i lay before you life and death there's the adversity right, right. right there you know and, right. and he's saying i lay it before you he's not saying you manufactured it you know and i tell you to choose life so to me that's where that verse that i picked up on and i don't i'll have to look it up but. yeah so we can see. okay so let's see so chase that rabbit. no that's fine i like chasing rabbits <laughs> Uh, we know Cain was angry because God accepted Abel's offering and rejected his. What does John say is the heart at, is at the heart of this murder? And I marked verse 12, so it's easy, right? I'm going to guess it says, uh, his, I guess it's his evil works, right? Or the lack of love? What do you think? I don't know. Well, my 
translation says, because his works were evil and his brothers were righteous. Mm -hmm. Now, the only thing that we have recorded, uh, correct me if my memory is not right, that, that the only works that is recorded that they did was the sacrifice they brought. Yes. Yes. Now, it's, it, it probably would be easy to assume that something uh, in their lives led them both to bring that particular sacrifice. Right, right. Uh, I think most theologians and scholars uh, and commentators think that when, when God brought Adam and Eve out of the garden and he clothed them with skins, that at that point he gave them the sacrifice that they were to bring. Right, right. Uh, that, it, again, that's not specifically stated there. It just right. says he clothed them. Uh, and then the next thing is uh, Cain and Abel bringing their sacrifices, bringing right. their offering. Right. And, uh, but that's the only real thing works right. that we have recorded for us, at least in scripture. Right. right. Now, there's a lot of things recorded in Jewish tradition and history. Yes. Things that are not written in, you know, in what we call the Bible. Right, right. But, the, but that's the only really works that we can see and, and answer this question. Right. Because that's, we don't know what they did. Right. And that we'd also we also know that later when God when Jesus when God gave the law, they were to bring of the fruit of the ground. They brought ten percent of to the Levites. That's how they ate. They brought their grain. They yeah. brought their fruit. There was all kinds of offerings. So it couldn't have just because one of you know one of the leading thoughts is well the animal was acceptable and the other wasn't. But in the Jewish testament in the Old Testament they brought it all so i think it was they a heart matter and right 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 offering. so and, i'm thinking yeah. it was i think it was a heart issue hmm. well it could yeah. be but when you're but it's just a supposition <laughs> well, it goes along with scripture to say so because god looks at the intentions of our hearts right and, and it's it's never about our works it's always about our heart behind but, but you know all cain had to do was go hey abel look i know you did it right can you tell me what you did <laughs> he didn't have to kill him he wasn't going to get any, he wasn't going to get any better position by killing him he well, wasn't going to better himself him tells you where his heart was exactly right. go all the way I mean, so there you heart? go the first Most worship service murder and yet that was <laughs> right. his first the plan of uh <laughs> repercussion right right so, right so we see that his intentions weren't pure to begin with he was all right, right. that's true right well, it, it makes you have to ask the question uh, to me anyway uh what was it that made it wrong? If, like you're saying, Jim, yes, later know. on on the Mosaic Law, mm -hmm. they, they brought grain offerings. They, mm -hmm. they brought, they and it, it was the fruit of his labor. So that's they what he the did. The first fruit of their crop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so was it, and, and you know, I kind of thought in the back of my mind most of the time, was that one was, it was the animal sacrifice and the other wasn't the animal sacrifice. Right. I, I now, think I don't, I don't know the scripture holds that, uh, you know, that's really a lot of proof in there. Right. Right. Oh, right. uh, well, we'll have to go back and read what God said. It yeah. was the blood. It was the blood. Okay. Was, there wasn't a blood sacrifice, and God has always demanded the life, the blood. That's that's what we base our. But in their in their position, one was the one was working the ground, and the other was more of a shepherd of the flocks, right? So they were bringing the tithe from what they were. I think the, I think the line of thought there was that Cain could have purchased a lamb, though from from I don't know though you're not supposed to buy it either. That's what made Jesus mad in the temple. <laughs> okay. I think they were just stuck, man. I think they were just. Stuck. I, I think it was their heart <laughs> intention. I think God saw, yeah. saw so, the heart. So let, let me go back now. This is back. Okay. In Genesis, what it okay. says in Genesis. Yes. Now, Abel became a shepherd of a flock, but Cain cultivated the land. Yes. There's no condemnation in that. Right. Absolutely no. not. In the course of time, 
Cain presented some of the land's produce as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also presented an offering, some of the firstborn of his flock and their fat portions. Now, this is well before the Mosaic yeah, Law. Yeah, yeah. Well, well before. And it says, the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering. And his offering. And his offering. For Abel. But he did not offering. have regard for Cain and his offering. Hmm. Cain was furious and he was downcast. <laughs> Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you furious and why are you downcast? If you do right, that's that word again. Isn't there it? you go. <laughs> if you do right, won't you be accepted? But if you do not do right, sin is crouching at the door. His desire is for you, but you must master it. And, and you know what? That's Old Testament. Sin is at your door and you must master it. So it was possible without the blood of Christ to master sin. We would never triumph over it until the blood of Christ and be clothed in righteousness. But he, but God told him Old Testament before the law, before the sacrifice. Well, it had already been done in heaven. But anyway, you know, before all that, it's at your door. You can master it. So we can master it to an extent in our own strength we and that comes down to not without the blood of christ but we can we can decide i'm not going to sin i'm going to follow god and so it comes down to if he could master it in the old testament how much more power do we have on this side of the cross clothed with the spirit the spirit of god living in us not just coming on us you know how much more can we live victoriously over sin and not it not reigning over our hearts and minds on this side of the cross. But listen to what God said again. Oh, sorry, that was a rabbit. Did you start <laughs> say something? I think Sue said Sue said something. Sue, uh, I've always thought that that he didn't bring the first fruits of his the best that he had, and I I don't know where I got that, but I've always thought that, and I like. What Carol said is the intent of the heart because he didn't want to present the best he had to God. And then I think his heart was already hardened because he committed the murder. And he was jealous of his brother because God accepted him. So I think he just didn't do it right. I think he didn't do any of it right. Well, let me read it to you again. If you do right, won't you be accepted? But if you do not do right, sin is crouching at the door. Mm. Now, to me, it that is saying that you're at the point of sinning. Right. It's right. at the door, but it hadn't come in. in, in the way right, before. right. Yeah, but where does your motive come from? It comes from <laughs> the heart. Yeah. And it's, so that's it's the door. Desire. That's the sin, door. Sin's <laughs> desire is for you. Right, you know what I got, <laughs> <laughs> and but then, you must then, master right. that desire, right? Then right. You read it, Roger, to say that uh, he presented the firstborn of the thing, and then yeah, no, that, that, back up there. Abel, in the that course of time, Cain presented just, some of the land's produce as well. Right, yeah. Some of the land's produce, some, some of it. its produce, so maybe not the and first. Abel pre also presented an offering, some of the firstborn, right? Of his flock. Mm. Now, right. What, I don't know if you'll heard what Mary said behind me, but she's saying that it was probably because it wasn't a blood sacrifice, yeah. God mm -hmm. required a blood sacrifice down through Jesus. Mm -hmm. He was the final sacrifice in giving his blood on Calvary. And that may be it, you know, because that could be after verse um, seven, you know, do we realize this is God talking to Cain? <laughs> yeah. Old Testament. Yeah. I mean, he's actually <laughs> yeah. verbally talking to Cain just like he talked to Adam and Eve. Yeah. Yes. It's God talking. And, it, and he's standing there before God and God is saying, if you do right, yeah. why are you furious? So there was something in that offering. Uh, and, and yeah, Carol, I, you know, it, it, 
It, it comes from the heart. And that's probably what God was looking at. Now, I don't know that it was so much that he rejected the grain that he offered, but right. he rejected what was there. And, and the that's reason right. that we don't know, but the reason he did what he did. Because the very next verse says, Cain said to his brother, let's go out to the field. Now, mm -hmm. we don't know if that was immediate the right. next day or whatever. Right. But there, but I just thought it was, it's interesting that God, I think God maybe have been saying to you, you're at the point to do what you shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. Sin is crouching right there at the door because God understood Cain's feeling furious. Why are you right. furious? Right. Why are you downcast? It's not Abel's fault. I mean, he doesn't say that. But God knows in his knowledge, he knew what he was thinking, what he was feeling. Right. And he's trying to tell Cain right there, you can't give in. Right. And it's crouching there at the door. You've mm. got to master it. Yeah. And we know the result is he did. It mastered him. It and mastered that, him. That goes along with what we were saying, too, about God being so compassionate and how he tries to right to reason with us you know and get us on the right track over and over again and yeah and i do think that's right that the offering may not be, have been right but it would have been the intention in the heart that led to the not right offering right and so so yeah that's yeah. where i guess i was standing on that one was because uh, it, that's it, where it, it begins it, yeah did you say he could have traded his grain created his whatever he cultivated Watermelon. Or an watermelon. animal. Yeah. Watermelon. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> if that's what God was or expecting. Or an animal sacrifice. Right. Yeah, if that's truly what God was expecting of him. I don't know if we know that at this point because we, we don't. We don't really. Yeah. Um, we, let me we throw. We don't really know. You know, we're trying to thank God now. We can't. Yeah, do we that. better get back on. Yeah. We're, we're too far let's off the rabbit. Go to Romans six. Let's go to Romans God. six real quick. It says. <laughs> It says, listen to this. It says, uh, gosh, I, I was just going to read a verse, but it says, if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him. So we have an advantage over Cain here, <laughs> right? Even yeah. if sin is crouching at the door, we have, uh, what, what is death to us has been crucified already. And we, it was crucified with him that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. Cain chose to be a slave, enslaved to sin at that point, because God said it's crouching at your doors, but you can master it, right? It says, for he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion on down here. Then he says, in verse 12, therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. Don't let it reign that you should obey it in its lusts and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin but present yourselves to god as being alive from the dead and your members as righteous as mem as instruments of righteousness to god for sin shall not have dominion over you for you are not under law but <laughs> under grace so we have an advantage over cain here in that we don't have to live. Well, he had a choice there. He had a choice then. Don't God let told him said you can master it. You've got to master it, but he didn't. And so, how much more equipped are we to master sin and not let it reign in our bodies now on this side of the cross, this side of the blood of Christ? Hebrews eleven. Mm -hmm. Y'all all know it. By faith. Abel offered to God yes. a better sacrifice than Cain. Cain, right? By this, he was approved as a righteous man because God approved his gifts. And even though he is dead, he still speaks through this by offering a better sacrifice. Yeah. And of course, you know, he, the writer of Hebrews, Paul, everything, had been talking about Jesus as being that better Better right. Than Moses, better than the right, right. Better than all that. So, yeah, that's good stuff. Lots to think about. Yeah. <laughs> it's good stuff. Anything else? We went over a minute, I think. Oh, yeah, we're over. <laughs>
ain't nobody gonna die from it uh and we didn't quite make chapter chapter three but we'll we'll be able to finish chapter three and get into chapter four next week i'm pretty sure i'm not i just kind of hit a squiggly line and said we stopped somewhere here because we, we didn't we not <laughs> uh, somewhere on no somewhere in one but we'll probably start with two next week probably 